If you're going to give a bonus or penalty in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, and it's not advantage or disadvantage, you have to make it clearly visible to the player experiencing it. If it's not on their character sheet, they may forget. Maybe you've never played 5th edition and don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe you've only played 5th edition and don't see why this is important. So let's give some context. Throughout the years of Dungeons and Dragons and other role-playing games that totally aren't Dungeons and Dragons, whenever an advantageous or disadvantageous situation occurred, you would get a bonus or penalty to your rolls depending on the situation. Are you shooting a target at long distance? Minus two penalty. Do you have the high ground? Plus one bonus. Are you flanking the enemy? Yeah, flanking! <coughs> okay, moving on. While this system does work, having multiple bonuses or penalties caused issues. It's easy to shoot an enemy that's 10 feet in front of you. How about an enemy that's 60 feet away? Behind a rock. That's on a hill. While they're fighting with an ally. On a windy day. Pop quiz! What's the bonus you get for having the high ground? If you said a plus one bonus, then you're correct. Congratulations! Now let me add the other position-based modifiers to your list of themes known, and we'll see how you do on the quiz at the end of the video. Also note, some of these, like cover, have their own section later. That won't be part of the test. In 5th edition, the creators of the game decided math sucks, and replaced this entire system with the advantage and disadvantage system. If you're in an advantageous position, you gain advantage. If you're in a disadvantageous position, you get disadvantage. If there's a little of both, you get nothing. Effects don't stack, so you can't get multiple levels of advantage, and you can't get multiple levels of disadvantage. Whichever you get, you roll two dice instead of one, and if you have advantage, you get the better roll. If you have disadvantage, you get the worse roll. It's fast, it's simple, and it lets players do their favorite theme, roll a lot of dice without math. People love this system, and it's a great rule but it does have its problems. Because it doesn't stack, no matter the amount of perfection in your opportunity, you still only roll two dice. And if there's a single theme that makes it a little worse, even that bonus is gone, since advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. There are variant rules to fix this, but there's another problem. Advantage and disadvantage are large effects. Where the previous examples gave modifiers of plus one or minus two, advantage is the equivalent of a plus five bonus. Note that being proficient in something doesn't give this high of a modifier until late into the game. Who would have known that having the high ground was more valuable than years of experience with a weapon? This lack of a place for smaller increments of bonus or penalties is a problem, and the creators actually agree, and still have a number of point-based benefits in the game. Proficiency and your ability modifiers are two obvious examples of a smaller increment bonus that the game gives showing that sometimes, some math is necessary. However, not all uses of bonuses and penalties work within this system. How many newer players here happen to know the 5th edition rules for cover? How about you, Mrs. Warlock? Surely someone who only ever shoots an eldritch abomination of a cantrip from 300 feet away knows how cover works. I've played many games of 5th edition. I can't think of a single time cover was considered or even brought up. After some time looking at all of this, I think I figured out what makes the bonuses that work, work. To put simply, the bonus must be easily visible to the player who's getting the bonus. Proficiency sits in a bubble at the top left of the character sheet, with the ability modifiers sitting just to the left of that. The moment you read you have a plus one longsword in your inventory, you don't need to read more to figure out what that bonus to attack and damage rolls is. If you're using magic, like Shield of Faith or Pass Without Trace, the fact that you have to actively use a spell slot and keep concentration means that player is too invested to forget. While I have seen someone forget their bonus from their fighting style, once the bonus was written very clearly on their character sheet, they no longer forgot about it. So why did I go through all of this detail? Well, I've seen a lot of people wanting to add minor benefits and such, where advantage doesn't work because it's too big. But their additions are often clunky and full of math. When creating these themes, they have to in some way interact directly with the character, instead of being a side item on the DM screen. Let's use flanking as an example, since that one's commonly used. 
The advantage I've seen other people give is so large of a benefit that combat begins revolving around flanking. Because of the lack of stacking, it causes people not to be as creative in combat since they can just use flanking instead to get advantage. The channel XP to Level 3 has a whole video on this, complete with response videos, so I'll try not to go too deep. Most people will change flanking to make it just a number bonus, like the previous games, and yet find that some players will still forget about it, or at the very least note that the rule doesn't seem to fit the 5th edition. If we want it to fit, it has to be on the character sheet in some way. Maybe the player has a magical dagger of plus two backstabbing, exciting them as they see new combat abilities with magic items. Maybe it's a fighting style for fighters and rangers, making going behind enemy lines a crucial part of that character. Maybe there's a spell or feat that can be used to give more mobility and a bonus to attacks in these circumstances. I do wish to reiterate that the advantage and disadvantage system is an amazing system that has opened the game up to so many new players. But with new players, some rules that may seem obvious to those that have been here for some time won't be so obvious for them. I believe by tying these bonuses we apply to something that's clearly on the person's character sheet, we can make it so everyone can easily use our loving additions. Pop quiz! What's the armor class penalty that you get for cowering to your enemies? If you set a minus two penalty, and you don't add your dexterity modifier to your armor class, then you're correct! Congratulations!